Deary me, my nostrils. Welcome back to the Nashville News. <laughs> I'm your host, Dr. Magnificent. Yes. <clears throat> today, we're digging deep and fully excavating fragrance history. Because today, we're going to review the legendary Shalimar by Guerlain. One of the longest running, if not the longest running fragrance still in production today. Composed by Jacques Guerlain, the third generation family perfumer, and released in 1921, only problem is they couldn't use the name at the time. There was another fragrance already called Shalimar, so they had to call it number 90 until 1925, when a legal dispute over the name was finally settled. And I say, thank God, because Shalimar is a way cooler name than number 90. During the 1920s, it was really popular amongst the flappers, as they were called, which ended up giving it this bad girl appeal. Amazing how this fragrance has survived so many generations, transcending all the trends of time. It must be something special. I heard Jalima talking it up a lot on his Scented Moments channel, and I feel like he and I have a pretty similar taste. And his, among several other opinions, are all pretty aligned, claiming that although it is a women's marketed fragrance, it's actually quite androgynous. I should specify though, I went with the Eau de Parfum, which was launched in 1990. So not as much history with that, from what I've heard, it's pretty much the exact same scent profile. It just performs a lot better. And for a fragrance that's been around for this long, I'm sure it's been extremely reformulated. And it may smell nothing like it did back in the 1920s. I have no way of knowing that because <laughs> good luck trying to find a vintage bottle from that decade. They may be out there, but I'll bet they cost a pretty penny. So this is a, uh, you know, a modern release, but still I hear incredible things. So let's open up this beautiful, exquisite packaging and See what it has to offer. Do I untie the... Oh, no, it's it's stretchy. Take off the little ribbon. We have a little envelope. Just smells like paper. <laughs> What's in the envelope? Oh, <laughs> my, my shipping receipt. <laughs> Don't need that. Ah, oh, and a cute little card with compliments of Guerlain Paris. Aww. Man, I could have signed it. I mean, that would have been nice. Oh, well, we can't be choosy. All right, here is the box. Oh, and also there's no shrink wrap, but I, I promise you I'm not cheating. This is a brand new unopened box. Oh, it's got the cute little bee logo in the middle. Can you see that? Can, can, can you see it? It's it's embossed there in the middle. It's kind of sticking up. Guerlain Paris written in gold. And let's see how it opens. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> Wrapped in a little blanket. <laughs> Ooh, I, I don't want to rip it. I'm just going to slide it out real quick here. <laughs> Feels like Christmas. And I'm not going to let this box explode today. It's nice. Oh, what is in here? What is that? It comes with a little pouch. What'd I get? What'd I get? I ordered it directly from Guerlain, so let's see what goodies they hooked me up with. Oh, cool. We have a sample of cherry oud. Kind of sounds like something I'd be into. And, uh... The very difficult to pronounce Abile Royale? No idea. But I will sample that on a later date. What's that? Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, and I got a uh, renew and repair advanced serum sample. How did they know I needed that? <laughs> Love the cute little pouch. All right, let's take it out of its papery little uh, sleeping bag. Oh, there it is. When I think about whoever's responsible for this packaging, I just picture Rowan Atkinson in Love Actually. <gasps> Anyway, here's the actual box, and it is shrink-wrapped, so I wasn't lying. Shalimar. All right, I guess I do need the knife after all. I'm gonna do my best Rowan Atkinson and Love Actually impersonation while I'm ripping off this plastic. Stupid. <laughs> this is so much more than a bag. All right, let's check out the very fancy bottle. Ah, I guess I could blow up this box. Let's go. Oh, yeah. oh, that never gets old. There she is. Really fancy, schmancy bottle. Schmancy. Look at the cute little neckerchief. The bottle design is said to be modeled after garden basins and Mongolian stupa art. And the blue fan-shaped bottle topper, inspired by a piece of silverware from the Guerlain family. And I imagine when it first came out, it was made of crystal, but now I believe the bottle is just glass and... <laughs> The cap is plastic. Oh well, modern times, what you gonna do? And the atomizer has the Guerlain logo right on the top there. Regardless of its modern corner cutting cost saving materials, it's still an impressive looking presentation. All right, that's enough presentation. Time to diagnose. The doctor 
is now in. Shalimar. It's just fun to say. Shalimar. Mm. Mm. Ooh, it's making the air smell so nice. Let it settle. Oh, oh man, this uh, open is really citrus heavy. Like, I'm, I'm talking like lemons. I'm getting lemons here. The open is nice though. It's not overly feminine or overly floral, but it has feminine qualities to it. I mean, it just smells good. That's why it survived so many years. And I can see why. Oh man, this opening is really good. Oh. This is so delightful. I can picture anybody liking this, whether you prefer more masculine or feminine scents. Although, if I were to place this on the spectrum, I would say it's center feminine leaning. Like it leans feminine, but it's really right down the middle. It's really gender neutral. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of shocked at this. When I saw the bottle presentation, I was expecting something kind of old timey smelling, more heavily floral. No, this one just seems to be really citrus and kind of green, at least in the open. It's starting to settle in and it's starting to sweeten up slightly, almost adopting kind of a powdery nature to it. Doesn't smell like a powdery iris though. My God, that's nice. That's really nice. I mean, who knows if it used to be more floral. I wouldn't be surprised if they tweaked the formula with the times to stay relevant because it does have kind of a modern twist. <sighs> Okay, I gotta know what's in it. Let's look up the notes. Well, there's only three floral notes I see listed, iris, jasmine, and rose. So I was wrong. There actually is a little bit of iris in here. But then we have leather, vetiver, apopinax, civet, incense, a ton of citrus, cedar, patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, more what we would consider masculine uh, perfume notes like all over the place, yet it still holds a really elegant femininity and almost kind of sweetening up and getting more feminine as it's drying down on my skin. But I'm really liking this so far. Shalimar, I, uh, I understand why you have survived so long. This is beautiful. This is gorgeous. And I'm really curious and kind of stoked about this leather note in the base, along with civet and incense. Curious how that's going to come into play as it fully develops. So, why don't we let it do that? I'll do my usual thing by getting the heck out of here and coming the heck right back. So you stay the heck right there. I'm back. Woo! And this thing has taken me on a ride. As hoped, the leather, civet, and the incense are more prominent in the dry down, but I think it's mostly sandalwood and tonka bean because civet and leather can be really pungent and bold. And this isn't a really big, loud, bold scent, which is also how I would describe its performance. It's not bad. It's all right. It's got some pretty decent staying power, but again, it's really not very loud, which might be a good thing because if this scent profile was really abrasive and really in your face, it could be a bit off-putting for some people. But yeah, Shalimar, I like it. And even with all those masculine leaning notes in there, it still shines as a gorgeous, more feminine leaning androgynous fragrance. And I love that in niche perfumery. So yeah, I will be keeping this. I highly recommend that you try it. If you're someone who usually goes for fragrances that are marketed towards men, you should still give it a try. Cause I feel like as a man, if I wear this out, I am just gonna exude confidence. Like I'm so confident in myself that I am happy to wear a women's marketed fragrance because you know where i stand with that ain't no gender in fragrance it's all just smelly love <laughs> it's really making me want to try the original eau de toilette because shalimar has really sparked my curiosity and did i spark your curiosity enough to want to subscribe are you curious to see what else i have to offer because i got more way more i'm not stopping won't you come with me and after you subscribe if you could be so kind to give us a like ring the bell maybe the algorithm gods will help this channel live on for another hundred years i'll keep hosting from the grave spread the word y'all share me with your friends your family spread us all over your socials and as always leave me a comment have you tried shalimar do you like more feminine leaning scent profiles let's get the conversation going because you know this is not a fragrance channel don't be scared it's okay it's a community hello and it's my time to flap on out of here stay smelly my darling nostrils the doctor is out <laughs>
ready in the fleshiest of fleshes.